Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. Knowing how to debug your own code or that from other people is gonna be one of the most valuable skills that you can learn when programming. And Unreal provides a number of ways to do this in C++, and in this video, I'll cover some of the main methods that you generally see used. So to begin, I'm back in my example actor class, and I'm just going to declare a few different variable types and expose them to the editor to demonstrate later. In the code file, I've already shown one of the most common types of debugging, which is logging, and I kind of brushed over this in the past. So we can take a quick look at what this is doing. So in short, this is just writing a message to the output log. We have a few arguments for the basic override. The first is the category, which we'll usually see set to a log temp which is simply creating a log message in a temporary log file. Next, we have the log verbosity, which will control a few things. Here we can see that this is set to warning, which will print this as a yellow warning message. Other examples could be things like errors, which will flag this as a red error message. And then another one even more serious than this would be a fatal log. Uh, and this would be really useful if you wanted your game to crash out if certain conditions are ever met. When I say useful, obviously crashes aren't great, but this will help you if you ever think there's going to be an issue which might be in a, a build. If something enters a certain part of code, then you don't want that to be missed by QA teams or just general playtesting. So having it completely crash out with a fatal error can be really useful so that you can track exactly where that happened and never miss it happening. So there are some of the things you get from log verbosity. There are a lot more of these available, so check out the documentation. Just Google log verbosity Unreal and you'll find all of that. And then finally, what's being written here is the tech, and that's what's actually being written to the log. Here I've just specified a predefined message, which can be useful to confirm a function is fired, but we're gonna take a look at how we can build on this with more dynamic results. So I'll copy this into the begin play function so that it gets called automatically as soon as the game is starting. Then in the next section, I'll update what's being printed and we can then override the text with an argument taking in a value. In this case, I'm going to use the debug int that I've created earlier. And to do this, you need to place a percentage sign to define where you want to print the value of a variable. In this case, it's going to be the integer, which uses a predefined type uh, value d to specify that we're printing an integer. We can then place a comma outside of the brackets followed by the variable name to print that to the log. We can also see how this is done for a float and a string variable too. So the float is very similar, but instead of a percentage %d, we're using the percentage %f for float. And then finally for the string, it's the same thing again, but instead of those percentages, it's percentage %s for string. This time, we do also need to place an asterisk in front of the debug string variable to dereference the f string when using an Unreal Engine log to a standard C-style t-char pointer. I've also just realized that for some reason I've declared all of the variables as visible anywhere. So I'm just gonna go back and change that to edit anywhere so that we can actually change them in the editor. So I've compiled this and we can return to the editor to see the results. With the play mode set to simulate, we can see that in the log section that the variables are all printing their default values that I've given them. So that's kind of what we hoped. I'll then press and exit play and change the variables to each have some new values. Then pressing simulate again, we can now see that this is printing their new value to the log section. So this can be really useful to find out what's actually happening to variables during play and track down any strange behavior from them. So that's the first type of printing that we'll usually see when debugging in C++. So next, back in the code, we can use an add onscreen debug message, which is going to be the more familiar type for anyone who's seen a print string in blueprints. So the first argument here wants a unique key to prevent the same message being added multiple times. Then the time to display on screen in seconds, we can pass in a display color, and finally the message to be displayed, which I'm just gonna copy from any of the UE log examples. And then to use this in the same way that we did with the, the log, taking in a variable to be printed, we need to prefix this with the f string double double colon print f. And this is called from the G engine. The G stands for global. So this can be called from anywhere. Again, I've compiled this. So I'll return to the editor to demonstrate the new on screen message. Now, this type of debugging can be much more useful for quick and easy information feedback during gameplay compared to logging, which usually requires you to read back through after you were playing and connect what might have been happening during the certain points of play. So that one was simple, as I said, can be used very much interchangeably and in the same sort of way, so there's not too much to go through there. So moving on to the final type of debug helper we'll be looking at is one of my favorites, and they are the draw types, which allow us to draw things like text or geometry in the world. And this can be really great for seeing exactly where something is hit 
uh, or will be placed or spawned and things like that in the world. So to begin for this one, we'll need the include draw debug helpers library. Then again, I'll call the function in the begin play. And I'm just gonna draw a simple sphere, but like with anything else, you have plenty of other options. You can draw things like cubes, circles, crosshairs, and much more if you look under the draw debug helpers documentation section. So this has several overrides. The first is the world context, so we can just use the get world. Then we want the center location vector, so this is where it's gonna be drawn around. For this example, I'll use the actor location plus an F vector offset to place it somewhere just to the top of the actor. Usually when you're using this, this would be the location of a trace result or something. And then we need to pass in a radius, so how large the sphere will be. I don't want this to be larger than the, the 100 unit cube. So I'll give this a radius of around 20 units, which will still be plenty visible. Next, we have the segments option. So this is how detailed the sphere will be. We don't want this to be too high for performance reasons, but again, 20 segments should be fine. I'm gonna make the sphere draw in orange and then set the lines to be persistent. I'll provide this a lifetime of 100 seconds so that I can still talk whilst it remains on screen. And the default depth priority is usually set to minus one, so I'll just stick to that. And finally, the line thickness, I think somewhere around two usually works quite well. And the name describes what this will control. So if those changes made again, I'll recompile this and go back into the editor. And here we can see our lovely little orange sphere. And it looks as though I could have done with some fewer segments. This is a, it's a little bit cramped, but it's sat at the 200 units above the actor as we expected, and it's gonna stay on screen. So all of that's worked as well. And hopefully this uh, visualization of something immediately shows the kind of use cases this can have and how this will be useful. So for example, this could be used for something like checking where traces such as line traces are ending or beginning, checking projectile impact points in situations like parkour systems, you could have this uh, checking exactly where the player makes contact with the wall. If you wanted to visualize this to see if you're being too lenient or too hard, things like that. So with that all done, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video or found any of these techniques useful. And remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content or tutorials that I release on a weekly basis. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.